You know, it seems like the, uh, the question that is on everybody's mind, uh, at least from the conversations that I've been having and such, is when will things go back to normal? Have you guys heard that question? Have you posed that question, maybe? I know I have. I've asked that question, when will things go back to normal? Like, for example, when will we ever stand shoulder to shoulder in lines at a theme park, right? When will that go back to normal? Or how about, when will we have that fat, that fat drunk guy spit all over our neck and yell at us at a baseball game, right? Like, when is that going to happen again? Or when will we ever practically sit on somebody else's lap in a tiny middle seat on an airplane, right? Those are some of the things that we kind of miss, right? Not really. You probably don't miss that stuff. But when are we going to get back to that type of normal? What's probably on your mind is like, when will we go back to Christmas gatherings? I just want to get together with the family. When are we going to get together and have everybody home? Those family get-togethers, I, I miss them. When are we going to have a packed church again, right? When is that going to happen? When are we going to have these huge ministry events again? You know what's funny? We did our annual Easter egg hunt. Of course, it didn't look like normal. We had about 150 at the park, and it was a great crowd, and we gave out tons of candy and Easter eggs and all that stuff. But normally, we get around four to 600 kids at the park, and we just couldn't do it the same, right? We, we just couldn't do it the same way we always do. And so the question on many of our, on our minds is, when will things go back to normal? You know, guys, the pandemic ravaged normal, didn't it? It ravaged normal. Even as things begin to open up again, it's still not 100% normal. In fact, there's restaurants on Knickerbocker that still aren't allowing indoor seating, even though you're allowed to now. This week, this week I met up with a friend. Uh, we had a meeting and I said, yo, let's go to Nicobaca Bagel, which is right around the corner from here. And uh, they have all the seats pushed up far against the wall, not allowing anybody to sit there. You can only take out or deliver, even though they're allowed to have some seating in there. Guys, I hate to break the news to you, but normal is gone. Normal is gone. And what you see now is our new reality. This is our new reality. We must accept this in order for us to progress and move forward. You see, the temptation for you and for me, for every single one of us here, is nostalgia. It's to talk about the good old days, right? You guys remember the good old days, right? February 2020, remember that? The good old, like a long time ago, remember that? Right? And it's so easy for us to get stuck in all that. Now, uh, Carrie, Carrie Newhoff, he's a, a, a leadership and a pastor, he's a leader and a pastor in, uh, in Canada. And he, he says this uh, specifically to leaders. But what I need you to understand is that and see yourselves as leaders. Okay, everybody in this room, everybody I'm looking at, everybody I'm making eye contact with, you're a leader at work, at home, in your community. You are a leader. I need you to see yourself as that. Look what Carrie Newhoff says. He says, the best thing you can do as a leader is to learn from the past and not live in it. After all, you can't go back. You can only lead in the present and prepare for the future. Did you guys catch that? As a leader, we need to learn from the past, not live in it. After all, you can't go back. You can only lead in the present and prepare for the future. I need each and every single one of you guys to see yourselves as leaders. And as leaders, we have an option. You could live in the past. You could stay stuck there. Or we can seek out our God-given opportunities that He has laid out for us in the present and in the future. What's it going to be? Those are your two options. And in this series, Back to Normal, we're going to be challenged to look at God's Word, to see what can we learn in order for us to move forward. What are the things that God's Word compels us to do? What are the things that He's asking of us to do? And how can we live it out? How can we flesh it out? in our current state, in our current reality. We can't go back to normal. And anyway, I can make the argument, was normal even working? Uh, throughout this series, we're going to have one key verse, and every week I'm going to ask you guys to read this out loud with me for the duration of the series. This is kind of our key verse. It's found in Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. I love you guys. Would you please read it out loud with me? Ready, go. But one thing I do... Forgetting what is behind and reaching forward to what is ahead. I pursue as my goal the prize promised by God's heavenly call in Christ Jesus. Let me hear you guys say, reaching forward. Reaching forward. That's what God's word is calling us to do. He's asking us to forget what is behind and to reach 
forward, to look at the opportunities that God has before. So what do we do in order to see that? Number one in your notes, if you're taking notes, you can open up uh, your little uh, brochures today there and see. Number one is this. We need to quit living in the nostalgia of the past. We need to quit living in the nostalgia of the past. Now, recently, my sister found a bunch of VHS tapes with a bunch of childhood memories. By the way, if you're here and you don't know what a VHS tape is, you can Google it later, find out exactly what it is. And what she started doing was she got all these VHS tapes and she started transferring them digitally to the computer and uploading them to YouTube. Did you guys ever look at old footage of yourself, especially as a child, and you just think back to all those memories that were created, right? Did you ever think, man, I wish I can go back to that time again, right? Especially if you're looking at old videotapes of you as a kid, and you're like, man, I wish I can go back to that. Not a care in the world. The biggest fear, the biggest responsibility that I had was the spelling test in third grade, right? That was the biggest thing that I had to deal with, right? And there's a lot, there's a bit of nostalgia in that. What I think is that many of us, are stuck in what once was and have that allowed to cloud what can be. Let me say that one more time. I think many of us are stuck in what once was and have allowed that to cloud what can be. And when we live in the past, we're not able to function in the present or build a better future. And guys, this is true professionally in, in your career, in your choice of career or work, in your family life, the same, certainly in ministry and definitely spiritually. For example, in family, in family dynamics, think about that. In family dynamics, there's change, right? I have, I'm a dad of three kids. And when you have a, when you have a child, you speak to them, you correct them, you, you speak, you, you, you cuddle them when they're two years old, one way. You can't do the same thing when they're 20, right? You can't discipline or talk to the same way when they're older, right? And those of you that have kids, you know this. And what happens if you have a 20-year-old and you continue to treat them like a two-year-old? There's strife, right? You butt heads. There's conflict that happens, right? That's what, that's what happens. And that's why I love what uh, Ecclesiastes 7.10 says. Ecclesiastes is a type of um, it, uh, uh, wisdom literature in the Bible is what it's called. And look at what it says. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 10. It says, Don't say, why were the former days better than these? This is what some of you guys are saying. Man, why were the yesterdays better than the todays? Why did the yesterdays look better than the tomorrows, right? And what, what, what the author of Ecclesiastes is saying, why were the former days better than today? Why, why are you saying that? Why were the former days better than these? Since it is not wise of you to ask this. It's not wise of you to ask that. Because yesterday's gone. The only thing we have is today, and we can prepare for tomorrow. Listen, like it or not, in the blink of an eye, the world changed. It changed. And with it, all the different ways of doing things have changed as well. Uh, they asked the question of Gary V. I don't know if you guys know who he is. If you're into like, uh, he's like a big business kind of social media guru, very colorful guy, uses a lot of colorful words. If you're not into that stuff, I wouldn't Google it later. He's a colorful business leader and a media guru. And, he, and they asked him, will things go back to normal? Will things go back to normal? He said, no way. I bleeped out some of the other stuff he said. No way. Never will I have to travel again like I used to all the time. I can just Zoom or FaceTime and make a million dollar business deal from my couch. Things are never going to go back to normal. Never, things are never going to be the same. You see, if we get stuck in our old ways or if we get stuck in the past, if we get stuck in nostalgia, we're going to miss out on the new thing that God is doing or we're going to miss out on new opportunities that we have before us. And anyway, I need you guys to understand that, that we serve a God of new things. We don't serve a God of yesterdays, a God of the past. We serve a God of new things. That's what he did with you. He did a new thing out of you. He made a new creation out of you. Look at what 2 Corinthians 5.17 says. It says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a what? New a new creation. The old has passed away. And see the what? The new has come. Guys, we serve a God of new things, not of old. And so when you put your faith in Christ, the Bible says that you're a new creation. You go from a sinner doomed for destruction to forgiven and a child of God. That's what Jesus does for you. And God promises that one day, listen, there's going to be a new heaven and there's going to be a new earth. 
God promises that one day He's going to restore all brokenness and make everything new. And when we live in nostalgia or when, we, when we're stuck in the past, we miss out on the new thing that God might be doing. So let me ask you guys a question. Are you, are you stuck daydreaming about the way things used to be? Are you stuck daydreaming on the way things were? Do you find yourself lost in nostalgia? We need to realize that unfortunately, guys, a lot has changed. And perhaps we're never going back to the way things were 100%. So what do we do? So what do we do, guys? Number two, you can write this down. We need to begin living in the now. We need to begin living in the now. So one of the biggest issues that we have with being stuck in the past and stuck in nostalgia is that we miss out the opportunities that God lays out before us right now. You miss it completely. And so one of my favorite quotes is from one of the wisest people that have ever lived. His name is Master Ugwe. If you've ever seen Kung Fu Panda, he said, Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. But today is a gift. That's why it's called the present. You guys ever seen Kung Fu Panda? Right? Isn't this, this, this a tweetable quote right here? Right? Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. But today it's a gift. That's why it's called the present. Guys, the present is a gift. And let me just congratulate you guys. You've made it thus far. You made it to today. You made it. You're here. With trials, tribulations, hardship, mourning, difficulty, you made it. Congrats. You've made it thus far. And now what we need to do is see the opportunities that God has given us and seize them and grab them. You know, sometimes if we've been able to get past the past, the next obstacle that we need to overcome is the fear of the future. If you are able to get past the past, the next thing, the next, kind of the next hurdle is the fear of the future. And sometimes we miss out on God's plan when we marinate the present in what ifs and but what abouts. Anybody, anybody have those, but what ifs, or, or those what abouts, about the future? And a lot of times we marinate our thoughts in that, and we miss out also on something that God wants to do. You know, a person that wrestled with this in Scripture, his name was Paul. He wrote about a third of the New Testament, and he wrestled with that tension. Now, I'm going to show you guys a couple verses. Tell me if you guys can sense that tension from these verses. Acts chapter 20, verses 22 to 24. Paul says this, and now I am on my way to Jerusalem, compelled by the Spirit. And look at what he says, not knowing what I will encounter there. In other words, there's a mission to accomplish. There's a place that he has to go. There, there's, uh, there's a mission that God has given him. But I don't know what's going to happen when I get there. But what if? The what about? Except, verse 23, that in every town, the Holy Spirit warns me that chains and afflictions are waiting for me. So I don't know what can happen. They might jail me. They might beat me. They might whip me. They might reject me. They might cast me out of the town. I don't know what's going to happen. Verse 24, but I consider my life of no value to myself. Now look at this. Look at these next few words. My purpose is to finish my course and the ministry that I receive from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of God's grace. In other words, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I know, the, I know God is calling me to do this. I know there's a mission to fulfill, and I don't know what's going to happen when I get there. But you know what? My purpose right now, my, my present situation, is to finish my course and the ministry that God gave me. I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I know that right now this is what God's called me to do. Guys, the past is behind, and the future is always unknown. There's always mystery. But what we have right now are the current opportunities that God has given us. Are you going to seize them? Are you going to seize those opportunities? Or will you allow the conditions of the past or the fear of the future to detain you from accomplishing God's purposes in your life? What are some of those opportunities? Maybe you're sitting there, Danny, what are you talking about? There's no opportunities. What are they? Listen, you have opportunities right now to love others like you've never have before. You have that opportunity. You have the opportunity to right now to serve those that are right around you. Right now, you have that opportunity. 
You have an opportunity to grow in your walk with Christ, to become the best version of yourself, to be the best representation of Christ in your job, in your, ha- in your home, among your family. You have that opportunity right now. You have the opportunity to fully integrate your life into your neighborhood and to get to know your neighbor. You have that opportunity right now. You have the opportunity to build into and to invest into the relationships of those that God has placed around you. You have that opportunity right now. And I can go on and on and on all day. You have plenty of opportunities. The question is, are you going to obtain it? Are you going to seize it? Are you going to fulfill it? Are you going to allow the past pain or the fear of the future to detain you from accomplishing that. Guys, we need to begin living in the now, lest we pass up on all the beautiful opportunities that God has placed, us, has placed before us right now. And here's the last thing, number three. Guys, I'm going to speak, I, I feel like this is like a prophetic word for you today. That we need to begin dreaming again. We need to begin dreaming again. What dreams have you put off to the side because of everything that you've gone through in the past year? You know, perhaps we can dub the pandemic the dream killer. Maybe that's what we can call it. It's the dream killer. Because perhaps you had plans, you had dreams, you had aspirations, you had goals, but then you allowed the depression and anxiety and the fear of the pandemic to stifle them. And it's easy. It's easy when you're surrounded by dark times and when you're surrounded by discouragement, it's easy to allow all that stuff to snuff out the dreams and the vision and the aspirations that was given to you by God. But that's why God wants to give you encouragement today. God wants to give you encouragement. He wants to remind you to begin dreaming again. Listen, in the Old Testament book of Jeremiah, the people were actually exiled from their home when we are, we're about to read this verse. They were exiled from their home in Jerusalem to the land of Babylon. They were not in a good place, the people of God, Israel. They were taken from their home. They were taken from their comfort. They were taken from their customs and traditions. They were taken from their temple. And they were entered from a familiar home into a strange land among strangers. They were not in a good place. And out of all the things that God could have told them in the book of Jeremiah, he could have communicated a bunch of things to them. What do you think he would have said? Maybe he could have said, you know, guys, you are in a difficult situation, but don't worry about it. I'm going to conquer your enemies. God could have said that. God could have said, you know what, guys? You've been overtaken by Babylon. You know what? I'm going to overthrow King Nebuchadnezzar. God could have told them, listen, I'm going to make you... Feared among all the nations. The nations are going to fear you and they're going to tremble at your feet. Or God could have said, I'm going to raise a mighty warrior from your midst and they're going to defeat everybody. But that's not what God said. God didn't say any of that to a bunch of people going through a difficult time, exiled from their land in Babylon. Look at what he says. You guys know this verse. You know this verse, Jeremiah 29, 11. He says, for I know the plans I have for you. This is the Lord's declaration Plans for your well-being, not for disaster, to give you a what? To give you a future future and a hope. I know the plans I have for you, therefore a future and a hope. He tells Israel that he has a future and a hope for them in this dire situation that they find themselves in. God reminds them that he has a plan and specific purposes for them. It's almost like God is saying, listen, I know it's a difficult time. I know that it's a tough season right now. And perhaps you've lost all hope. And perhaps all you see right now is your past and your present difficulty. But guess what? I have plans. And those plans include a future and a hope. You know, some of you have allowed the great catastrophe of the pandemic to destroy all your hopes, all your future hopes and aspirations. You know, in March 2020, right before the shutdown here in New York City, you had dreams, you had goals, you had ideas, you had innovations, you had a plan, a roadmap. You, you did a PowerPoint slideshow about all the amazing things. You, you had a YouTube video of what you were going to do. You were telling everybody. But then the world came to a clash. Let me encourage you today. It's time to begin dreaming again. It's time to begin dreaming again. Don't allow yesterday's mess put you into misery and miss out on God's ministry. 
It's time to dream again. It's time to dream about how are we going to reach more people for the sake of the gospel, for the good news. How is begin, it's time to dream about how to serve more people than we ever have before. It's time to dream about how to grow in love and community with one another, to dream about that and figure that out. It's time to, 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 to figure out how to grow in forgiveness and to let go of bitterness. It's time to dream about how to grow. It's time to dream again. Some of you have allowed past difficulty, trials and tribulations to stop that. And I'm encouraging you. It's time to begin dreaming. Again, I'm going to invite Hunter to come up here. And he's going to lead us in one final song. And in a second, I'm going to invite you guys to partake in, in communion if you would choose to today. But I want to speak to some of you here in the room that perhaps, you know, you've allowed your past to dictate your present and destroy any hope of the future. I want to talk to you. I want to let you know that there's good news for you today. There's good news for you today. Because when your past is full of shame, when your past is full of regret, when your past is full of guilt, and when you relive those emotions and those memories, I want to remind you, I want to share with you that there's a good God who loved you so much that he sent Jesus to die for your yesterdays so he can give you a new today and a better tomorrow. It's a good God that loves you and died for your yesterdays, died for your sins. The Bible says that while we were yet still sinners, in other words, when you had no affections for God, when you weren't trying to pursue him, while we were sinners, God demonstrated his love for us. And he sent Jesus to die in our place for our sin. And listen, Jesus died to rid you of your guilt and your shame. And he rose from the grave to give you life and a future. And if you're here today and you've yet to put your faith in Jesus and you want to know, how do I do that? How do I participate in Jesus' forgiveness of my sin of the past? How do I experience that new today? The Bible says all you need to do is put your faith in Jesus. Take your faith off of yourself, off of your ability to save yourself, off of your guilt and shame, off of your religiosity, and put it all on Jesus. Put all your trust on Jesus, because he is the only one that is mighty to save. And if you yet to make that decision, I invite you to do it today. Let me uh, lead us in prayer. God, you know, we're not fooling anybody. If we, uh, we pretend like the past 13 months have been easy, by no means, God. But the temptation, Lord, is to live in nostalgia and to live in what once was and to live in the past. So, God, would you forgive us for living in the past? Would you forgive us, God, for those of us that have been stuck in disappointment, that are stuck in tragedy, that are stuck in hurt, God? Deliver us from that. And, God, I pray you would help us to live in the present. Help us to understand and to know that today is the day that you have made. Therefore, we will rejoice and be glad in it, that today is a gift. And that today you have presented us with opportunities. So give us eyes, God, to see those opportunities you lay before us. And God, all over this room, dreams have been snuffed out, have been stifled due to the current hardship and difficulties. So God, I just pray right now. I speak, Lord, I speak to dry bones, God. That you... God, would help us dream again. Help us dream again. Give us bigger dreams than we've ever had. Lord, a greater dream for our families, a greater dream for our community, a greater dream for our neighbors, a greater dream for this church. God, help us dream again to reach more people for the sake of the gospel, to grow your church, to provide 
to trust you to provide above and beyond for your kingdom's sake, Lord, not our own. So God, I pray you would help us do that. Lord, if someone is on the fence of their faith, I pray, God, that you would reveal yourself to them and just show them the extent of your love and grace. You died for our yesterdays so we can have a new today and a better tomorrow. And for that, we're grateful in Jesus' name. Amen.